Robert Street, Stephen Trental got almost eight years behind bars for his crimes. He left his two young boys and his loving wife behind. Now, did he do it because he saw no other way out of his financial nightmare, or is this a kind of greed that is gripping many people? Joining me tonight, ex-wife of convicted bank robber Stephen Trental and author of Disguised Blessings, Jean Callahan. And Jean, your ex-husband Stephen, Hi, was, was, thank you for joining me, was just released from prison thank last you. week. Uh, have you seen him since he was released? I actually haven't seen him, but the kids have seen him. Um, the kids were with him last weekend, and it was so beautiful to see them so happy. They really haven't, you know, known know him um, only in prison. So it was so great. And, and you're on, so happy. You're on the record saying he really was a good father. That there's some sort of disconnect between his his personal interpersonal life and his life as a criminal. Yes, you know, he really is a great father, was a great father. Um, something happened to Steve. Um, he had some kind of breakdown, um, partially, you know, due to the stress of Wall Street, uh, fear, greed. You know, um, he went crazy. Well, really. yeah, Gene, Gene uh, and did, does he have a psychiatric diagnosis? Was he in a manic state or something? Or was this uh, a, 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 a choice? You know, it, it was a choice, yes, for sure it was. You know, he, he chose this, um, which was um, really, really wrong, of course. Um, but he was in some kind of manic state, um, you know, acting really crazy all the time, um, stressed out, loss of weight, um, just really not him at all. Well, what I wonder, Gene, though... Not the man I married, really. I understand. And my question, though, aside from his particular psychiatric condition, I, is this the tip of an iceberg uh, and sort of an extreme example of something that has gripped people, certainly on Wall Street and maybe throughout the country, where they are so hell-bent on living a certain lifestyle, they've taken on massive debt, and, you know, are, are the Occupy Wall Street people right, that, that people will go to any lengths to just maintain that lifestyle as opposed to selling their assets and living a simpler life? Um, I agree with you, for sure. Yes, I do. Um, I think that, you know, I think he was in greed. I think he was acting out of greed in a way. Um, well, let me, let me show the audience a clip from CNBC's American Greed, where okay. Stephen, Stephen is talking about the fateful decision to commit bank robbery. Watch this. And I was just so desperate and, and you know, at a dead end. This was the, the crazy facade that I had, was living. And I'm going through all of these options, and I'm like, well, why don't I just go rob a bank? Say if, if I don't if I don't have a gun, nobody's going to get hurt. Let's go for it. And Gina, I guess I have a couple questions out of that. One, and let me ask this first: Did, did you miss some warning signs that you wish you'd intervene upon earlier? You know, I do have to say that definitely he was acting um, very um, harshly. He was very angry. He was losing weight. Um, he wasn't. Um, you know, like, I mean, he used to be really um, happy all the time. Um, did, did you try to get so him to get help at that point? Did you ask him to see his doctor? Therapy, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. And oh, yes, I did. He obviously didn't discuss. I used to cry to him all the time. He I used to cry to him saying, what happened to you? You're not the man I married. And he obviously know? did not discuss his plans with his therapist. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the other question I have is, is the, do you have um, cautionary warnings for other people out there that may be living above their means? Well, I would definitely say, you know, to really know um, what your household expenses are, for sure. And, um, and for me, like as a woman, um, Stephen actually never mentioned anything, to, you know, so I didn't know anything. Like at the time? Well, I'll like tell you what, what that, that, is, that the right there is something that I think both either partner can pay attention to. This, this should be a joint effort yeah. in marriage, and people should know what's going on in their household. Don't you agree? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, that, that, sure. that is, I think, something we can learn from this tale. Finally, here's a clip from Investigation Discoveries, Who the Bleep Did I Marry? This is how Stephen got caught and was ultimately sent to prison for eight years. Watch.
The evidence against Stephen was overwhelming. According to police records, Stephen had been arrested and fingerprinted back in 1983 for a DUI, and those prints matched the note left behind at the ninth robbery. The fingerprints don't lie, so the fingerprint was, was a telltale sign. Then we did lineups, and he was identified by the victim tellers and witnesses on several of the banks. So um, we, we, were, we were locked. It was locked. Gene, if he hadn't gotten caught, do you think he would just would have continued? I think he would have. I and, really do, And God yeah. knows where that would have ended up then. I mean, in a way, it might have saved his life to have gotten caught. Yeah, I, I think so. Well, Gene, thank you for sharing the story. I think there's, stuff, there's something to be learned out of this, and I hope people kind of co contemplate this, because this, this is a story of our time right now, and I appreciate you sharing it with the world. And when we come back... Thank you so much, Dr. Drew. My pleasure. Now we're going to switch gears and talk...